Hey, Kitty Girls, it's Sunday, March 3rd, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, where we review the most recent U.S.-based system show episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, which happens to be season 16. So we're going to be talking about the episodes Snatch Game and See You Next Wednesday. And for those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to uh, call something out in the beginning. The first episode is what I have most of the memories of. The most recent episode, I don't remember shit because I thought it was poop. And there's that. I'm just saying. Drag them. It was a filler episode. No! Yes. It was an absolute filler episode. It didn't have any purpose, really. It didn't serve anything. It made a queen go home. And a bunch of people are upset about the queen that went home because there were other queens that probably should have gone home first before them. There was also a setup and a sabotage. That was a choice. We all mm -hmm. have choices. Some of us make the wrong ones. And some people are instigators. Dawn. <laughs> Fucking little evil pixie. You Anyways. have some things to say. I'm annoyed. I can't wait to hear how this turns out. <laughs> Listen to you. All right. Well, with that being said, uh, are you ready to jump into our first segment? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm so amused now. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. Yes. Uh, so it's time to put the pedal to the metal. For those of you that aren't aware, there are three segments uh, in this portion that we talk about where we have serves, which happen to be the positive things that we liked about these particular episodes that we're going to be discussing. Then we have swerves, which are basically the road hazards in this drag race that you should have probably like avoided all outright. And then we've got the controversial category, nerve. Because nerve can be, yes, mama, house down boots, you you go, girl, because it's very positive. Or it could be like, what the fuck you think you're doing? Like that's just that's that's not a thing. That that was that was just awful. It was bad. What was that? Yeah, it was bad. It was boots. Or mm -hmm. in the ever uh, fabulous, often quoted for the rest of eternity. Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> right. Right. So there's that. That is that. All right. So David, what do we get into? Uh, what are you giving serves for? Okay. Um. I am actually giving serves mm -hmm. to Morphine's Wednesday look. So okay. the name of the challenge, what it was a design challenge. It was a building an outfit challenge, yada, yada, yada. They're supposed to be neo-goth, and that was the whole prompt, right? Mm -hmm. and they had all this fabric that they were given that's mostly black and white and sometimes, like, maybe some grays. I didn't really see a whole lot of gray fabric, but, like, this, like, black and white and sometimes a print and whatever fabric. So there was a whole idea behind this, which, okay, clearly we don't know goth um, because there's other colors, but whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> beside the point, but the idea was to take something or, and make it neo-goth. Like, th those two words were specifically mentioned by RuPaul in the workroom. Mm -hmm. Neo-goth. Okay. And Morphine, I feel like, hit that, like, 100%. This outfit that was very, like, it was it was a, a homage to, like, a Morticia Adams look, but it was done in a very, like, I don't want to say modern way, but it was done in a very different way. It mm -hmm. gave a different silhouette. It had, like, this very fun train. Um, and considering that Morphine doesn't sew or hasn't, been able to sew in the past her doing that was quite beautiful i thought it was very good and on top of that she gave us this very fun like makeup look it's mm -hmm. very like you know gray toned um, monotone kind of makeup look with this red lip i was loving it when you said neo goth that's what came to my mind mm. so that's why i'm feeling a little way about that well, it, and my thought was, like, when they said it was Neo-Goth, I was like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, and how are the girls supposed to know that? They don't have devices. They're not allowed to go online. 
and look up the definition. Um, so that's why I think we got a lot of interpretation. Um, but it was mm. all over the, the board, so to speak. I, I do think that Morphine did better than expected. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also kind of obvious that she wasn't going to go home. Mm. At least to me. So yeah. blame it on the edit, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I can see why you gave her a, a serve because yeah. she did... I, I feel like this is what it comes down to in design challenges. Either you are a designer, mm -hmm. which that was a very important discussion in this episode that I'm so glad that came out, which mm -hmm. is there's a difference between being a sewer mm -hmm. or a seamstress and a designer. Because to be a person who can use a sewing machine does not mean that you can design shit. It means you know how to put two pieces of fabric through with some thread and make mm -hmm. them stay together. So, like, there's a very you know different kind of stitches, thing. You know what a zigzag stitch is. You know those things. You can, you can, you know the choices and all that stuff. You can work a sewing machine. Yeah. Right. But it's obvious that there were two slash three queens out of the remaining eight that are designers. Right. And understandably, they ended up in the top. As they <laughs> should, I feel. Like, so that's where I was like morphine did well with what she had right and therefore i think that's why she was safe right because the two that were in the bottom in my opinion should have been in the bottom so as a, although i'm not happy about it but you know <laughs> i guess that's the way that the game is played we have we have something to say i'm sure you do uh -huh. so, speaking yeah. of Speaking of serves and Don. Oh, um. <laughs> all right. So um, I wrote Don St, like Don their name, and then dash E S T Y. It's a play. It's a pun. It's a play on honesty. That mm. I think someone else has already said it before. But like in the in the Meet the Queens period of time before the first episodes aired, there was a lot of comments from the other girls about how shady Don is, mm. and like. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But now as I've been watching this season, I was like, oh, okay, this is where we are. Like, everyone knows that Dawn has things to say, and Dawn is just being honest. Mm hmm And she isn't getting the villain edit like Plain is. Is she, though? I think they're being very nice to her. Okay. Because I think there's other shit that's being said that isn't being aired. Mm-hmm. I think she's got other things going on that, like, you know, and they're and they are kind of screwing over a little bit because then there are these moments where she's like, she's like, oh shit, don't put that in, and they put it in. And I was <laughs> like, I was like, okay, so who's playing who? Right. Like, you're you're surrounded by previous season girls. All the dolls told you how this works. You very well know anything you say can and will be used. So, mm. are you intentionally saying things and then saying that afterwards? To get them to to air it on purpose, are you doing mm. some reverse psychology? Are you playing the Are you playing the play or playing the game as it were? Right, 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 right. So, uh -huh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. I appreciate Donesty in these episodes where she was just like <laughs> speaking her mind about things and like you know, and it and, yeah. and it did amuse me in Untucked this last episode oh. when she was. Um, where, where it was kind of being called out, and I think she was one of the first ones that called out Plane's reaction. Mm hmm And was like, what, what, what was that? What was that? And she's like, what? Nothing. And she's like, oh, no. You had a reaction. Like, And I was like, here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. That's something. Yeah, I, I appreciated that, that she's not letting shit slide. She's like, no, 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 no. If you're going to, like, turn a new leaf and you're going to be a good girl, and you're in your congenial era, your your face gives it away, honey. Like, that's not how this works. <laughs> right. Clock the mug, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, we know yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. All right, so let's move on to swerves. Um, yeah, nobody's necessarily surprised by our picks, I guess. <laughs> Who are you giving a swerve <laughs> to, David? Um, it's to Maya. 
And I said, come on, girl. Like, wh- what is going on? I'm... <laughs> okay. Full tea. Full honesty. Here we go. Okay. Um, one of the things I wrote down when they were doing the critiques for this most recent episode, which was the design challenge, I wrote down, tell the truth, Maya. Like, while, while they were on stage, oh. I wrote down, tell the truth. And the that reason I wrote moment. that was because do not take as much credit for this dress that you could take. We've had the girl that has said, oh, I made all this myself. And we know that's a lie. We've all been there. We've seen that shit. Mm -hmm. This particular episode, they made a point to show the other girls saying and doing things in regards to the fact that Safira helped Maya a lot. If not, did not necessarily, I would say not built the whole dress herself. She did not sew the things together. Maya probably sewed the things together. Maya probably only sewed the things together and maybe added a few little elements like the skull and the birds. Like Maybe that's it. I'm, I'm just calling it. Jim is a costumer. Jim does costuming for, like, did costuming for a living. He was like, the hardest thing in making an outfit is cutting the stuff out. And we all saw that Safira did that. Or did most of it. Let me, let's rephrase. Or at least did some of it. Mm -hmm. So for Maya to have, if she had gotten on stage and said, oh, this was mine and I made it, I'm like, oh, no. Mm -mm." (laughs) But Jim asked me a good question and I'm on the fence about it. So I'm curious how you feel about it. She thinks, and I think even it was maybe mentioned in Pit Stop as well. Do you think her not making the outfit herself should have put her immediately in the bottom? Ooh, no, she better don't. <laughs> that hey, got y'all. that got really dicey when when I mm-hmm. mean a look of the look on a couple of the queens' faces when Rue says no one will be leaving the stage. All of you will be getting critiqued. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, here we are. We're not quite halfway. We're really close. Y'all mm-hmm. are going to get feedback. Um, so when Michelle clocks it mm-hmm. and says, okay, something's not adding up for me. Yep. The last time you made an outfit, you said you couldn't really sew. And we got what we got. This time, we got something I don't even I don't know if Michelle exactly said this, but the impression was Michelle was saying we got something different, we got something better. Yeah. Did you sew this? Yeah. And then the judges make fun of it. Like yeah. make a joke of like or or were you like, Safira, could you please like sew this for me? You know, or make me a dress or whatever. And I was like, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. Now Safira defended Maya in Untucked. And Safira was not straying from the story. Correct. And I'm saying story because Correct. the way it was edited, everything adds up to what Safira and Maya said, which is Safira helped. And like you said, Maya did the sewing. Mm-hmm. But Maya did not necessarily design. And Maya yeah. had very Maya's- limited like uh, like determination and getting the measurements think, and yeah. picking like right. stuff and like eventually mm-hmm. cutting. So yeah, like I, I don't know. Like it was, it was like when the question got asked and that was happening, a part of me, like it didn't happen, but that would have been like the heart in the throat moment or the stomach in the throat moment where you're like, Oh shit, you go home. Like, cause they're going to be mm-hmm. like, this is not acceptable. Yeah. But you know, they, <laughs> the thing is she ended up in the bottom. Right. As she should, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying she deserved to be there because of the of the question you're asking. I'm like, the effort wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> I mean, the the, the, again, the sad thing for me is like, obviously, Plasma did a bad job. Everybody knew it. Plasma knew it. Um, 
Maya did not do a very good job. And as much as like you just gave a serve to Morphine, I wasn't blown away by Morphine. Mm-hmm. So to me, they were the bottom three. Yes, I wrote that too. But Morphine had a finished concept mm-hmm. that was presented. Mm-hmm. And I felt like Morphine's is a doable thing that needs in some editing. Mm. If you had more time, you could have done more with it. Right. Where Maya's... Okay, I'm just going to... I would be vulnerable, but brave. And I'm just going to make a statement. I think Maya thought she was going home. Mm. And that's why she didn't give no fucks and she didn't do anything. Because mm. she was like, well, fuck my drag. I'm out of here. Like, this is this is the episode I get eliminated in because I can't sew. I'm not really a designer. Like, it's obvious mm. I'm going to be in the bottom. It's my third time around. My ass is going home. Like, right. this, is, this is the way it's going to be. She knew where she was going to end up in a sense that she knew right. that she was going to be in the bottom no matter what she did. Right. And it was a matter of who else ended up there. And then it kind of became obvious as the episode was airing who else was probably going to end up in the bottom, especially right. when the runway happened. Right. Because then I'm pretty, um, sure, pretty sure a lot of us were like, oh, girl. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It just bothers me. So to your point, to, to more directly answer your question, I... I don't know. Willem on Race Chaser has this thing that they love to say. They're like, I love it when a girl doesn't break a rule because it's not a rule yet. Mm. But once you break the new rule, now it's a thing. Mm -hmm. And so that might become a thing in the future. Now it might turn into like you have to spend like 75% of the energy or whatever it is Mm -hmm. into making the thing. And who knows? Like, it might get ugly again. It might be one of those where Rue's like, I don't care if there's 12 of you bitches. Y'all going to stand here on the stage, and I'm going to go right down the line. I'm going to say, give me a, give me an, an opinion. Did uh-huh. did Miscellaneous Queen make this outfit? Yes, no. And I don't want no maybes. I don't want no gray areas. I don't want no H&M up in this bullshit. I want yes or no. Right. You know, and just like down the road. Boom, boom, uh-huh. boom, boom, boom. I could see that playing out in a future episode in another uh-huh. season because she's like, I'm not having this. Like, right. Um, it it. I I kind of agree with Willem. This is a weird statement for me to say, um, <laughs> but I do feel like that's the truth. There's nothing in the rules, I'm mean, quote unquote, whatever rules there are, that you can't get someone to assist you. Right. Because realistically, they all assist each other all the damn right, time. Right. And. I mean, Plas- or Plasma's wearing plain Jane share hair. She calls right. it out and they leave it in the edit. Like, she just flat out says it. And the queens every yeah. season have talked about how they've borrowed yeah. each other's wigs. Mm-hmm. They've borrowed each other's, like, hosiery, shoes, earrings, jewelry, yeah. you name it. Right. Exactly. So there's not a lack of help and assistance that goes on in the show. Like, right. queens helping queens, sisters helping sisters, whatever you want to call it. That's always been the case. So that's why I felt like this was a weird call out in this episode Mm -hmm. but I also saw their point but to counter that point I'm going to say this helping another queen means you have less time for your own shit so if 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 Safira helped Maya Safira had less time to do her stuff Mm because they are doing it at the same time they're all supposed to be doing stuff so no matter how much help she gave Maya, Safira had less time to do on her stuff. Well, and in the edit, there was a lot of talk about how they were there late at night. Right. Which was the first time in, I think, all the American seasons that ever actually made it on camera. There's been Mm -hmm. discussion in confessionals or, like, you know, interviews or whatever where they talk about how, like, they take stuff back to their hotel room or they stay super late or whatever. (laughs) And apparently this time for the design challenge, all of them stayed late on the first day. Right. Um, Because it's entirely possible that they had... Maybe because of the, you know, schedule of the the episodes or the the recording, maybe they only had an episode. Well, right. Like, so normally episodes take two to three days. Sometimes design challenges or complex, like, numbers, like, practice stuff takes four days. This is what's been put out into the, the world, like, in various interviews and behind the scenes stuff. So 
I'm wondering if they only got three days for this episode, would they really all kind of wish they'd gotten four? Right. Because right, the right. fourth day is the runway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the first day is, like, the mini challenge in the beginning of the design, and then you get, like, theoretically two days in between to, like, work and tweak and cut and blah, blah, blah. And I think mm -hmm. they only got three. And mm -hmm. so, like, the first night is the night most of them stayed up, and probably it's very smart on their part because when the second night comes, you don't want to be burning the candle that badly. Because yeah, you got to get up the next day and do our all do all the makeup and drag and all that shit. Which leads to the controversy about Maya showing up smelling like a rose, apparently. And right. everybody was like, well, of course you do, bitch. You didn't do nothing. <laughs> and that's sort of where I feel. I like, and wow. again, I'm... To calling, I'm keep calling my Atma. We've I know we've been talking about this for a while, and that's sort of why I'm like, come on, girl. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no need to rub this in their faces, as it were. And I, and maybe, like you said, maybe she was, she knew she was going home. She was like, fuck all this shit. Like, I don't give a fuck anymore. Um, or she thought she was going home, but we know in another episode, she has some shady things to say on the couches once you know, plasma got eliminated. Spoiler alert. But like the 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 shit that that's the shit that gets on me. Don't don't get on the high horse you didn't earn. Well, and it's and it's complicated. I'm mm -hmm. affirming what you said, but I'm 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 yes anding. It's complicated because you are a queen on RuPaul's Drag Race, like the largest entertainment franchise in existence around the globe of this caliber. Mm -hmm. You also. Are a queen of color mm -hmm. so queens on rupaul's drag race like go through a, a horrendous gauntlet and get chewed up and spit out mm -hmm. maybe you're gonna be ground chuck by the end of this if this narrative keeps playing out because yeah. they're gonna come for you and it's yeah. not right and it's not fair right but you ain't whitney probably houston even, so like <laughs> probably even doubly so because of all of the things you mentioned Right, and that—that's my point. Is like, why would you? Why would you invite that narrative? Like, you've already been the quiet one for the season, mm -hmm. and now that you're coming out of your shell, I my concern is people are going to be like, "You're a bitch," mm. you know, they're or you, hard, or you're shady or whatever. Yeah, right. And and I'm like, that's not cool. That's kind of not fair. But at the same time, as several of the queens figured out about what halfway through to where we are. They started realizing, like, if you don't say nothing, then they can't do nothing with it. Like, mm -hmm. so don't give them stuff. But, so yeah. <sighs> There's that. What about you, Mr. Gary? Um, I, <laughs> no one's surprised by this. My swerve is Jane Badall. Oh, yeah. Not good all, bad all, girl. Like, and here's the thing that I think it was Alaska and Willem were talking about. They were like, or even maybe like Trixie talked a little bit about it. When you do Snatch Game, your success or failure is dependent on Rue. Mm. Like you could do all the preparation of the world you want. You can like do a character study. You can do these things. But if you can't volley, if you can't be quick and witty, and if Rue don't want to play, you are toast. Right. And so... Some people kind of feel like Rue was not playing with uh, with Nymphia. Mm. And I get it. Like, Nymphia wasn't exactly being funny. She was being kooky. Right. And there's a bit of a distinction between the two. And so. Rue's attitude that day apparently when, when filming was like, I'm not in the mood for kooky, bitch. Shut up. Next, <laughs> like she just she did she wasn't having it. No, and and um, who is it that does it? I think it's Drag T or something like that. They're on um, Drag T served with Matt. I think he's British or Australian, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, he does a lot of reviews of the Roscoe's viewing party. Like he watches them in debt and then talks about a lot of stuff that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that one was. It was morphine that was on the show, and they explained that a lot of what um, um, not playing Nymphia did went on way longer than they even showed, mm -hmm. and that's what became annoying, and that's what became okay. a problem. Um, 
which I think, you know, again, if, like you said, there's a difference between being like, I'm going to have, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to have a good fun laugh or something. But if you're kind of laughing at yourself and no one is laughing with you, it does kind of really, really great. And if you keep doing it and don't change anything and don't do anything that helps or encourages or what have you, then it does kind of end up being like, bad really bad well and one of the other things is like hearing that nymphia went on and on and on and like that became grating or difficult nymphia might have been giving a lot of content not knowing what they were going to edit and so it's a double-edged sword it's like do i give damon two pounds of ground chuck or do i give him one pound if i give him two pounds he can make more with that Mm -hmm. or damon could or damon could just turn around and be like i'm vegan it's right uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> and like, well, I'm a vegetarian. Oops. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. No, so that makes sense. So, yeah. I mean, no one's surprised. It, it was it was not good. Which is ironic because I thought Morphine was going to suck. Like, I thought Morphine was going to be horrible at Snatch Game. Mm-hmm. Especially with the character, that she, the, the thing yeah. that she was doing. I was like, I don't even know what this is. I'm so, like, lost. Same. I'm confused. Um, I didn't know who Plain Jane's, like, thing was. And then to find out yeah. they're an actual celebrity in Serbia or whatever. And, like, like very quickly I was able to get their mm-hmm. character. And I was like, oh, all right. Not a fan, but you're doing it, girl. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like, right. not not a fan of the personality, but you're you're doing what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So there's that. All right, you ready to move on nerves? Nerves? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I just, Chad Michaels. Uh-huh. That's it. That's the tea. Like, <laughs> like I feel I'm loving that we keep bringing the queens back in this way. Um, this was a, a good opportunity. I think Chad came in for um, Snatch Game, um, which makes sense because they slayed Snatch Game as Cher. Mm-hmm. Granted, they I, and and they did something, and I, I appreciate Chad and the reason why they chose Chad because if you remember the episode, for those who don't, because it was so. Uh, um, Chad wasn't going to do Cher. Mm. Chad at first was thinking about doing someone else because Chad has always been right. We know who Chad is. Like that's the thing. Like so, you maybe want to play it up or whatever. And I think I can't remember who told her, but someone kind of explained to her: do what you know and do what you can enjoy. And we're so glad she did. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, Derek got the same thing, right? With for Brittany. Right. Like, mm-hmm. here's here's the thing for those that are kind of new to Drag Race or new to drag entertainment. When you are an impressionist, mm-hmm. um, when you are an illusionist. And you like make a living after on being a, a char- like a character, but it's a it's a celebrity, and it's not a parody necessarily. Um, right. Like Morgan McMichael's does pink. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I mean, like some of the girls have like very distinct things. There's been many a Dolly Parton like mm-hmm, knockout mm-hmm, like impersonation. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a bunch of those out there, and I agree with you. Like if you if you know what you do, do what you do. Like right. And and on top of it, it's like, bitch, you got this in the bag. Like, mm-hmm. you could probably fall asleep and still do good. Um, yeah. So I agree with you. Like, I thought that was an interesting poor choice. I think some other people were a little critical because they were like, oh, look, Rue's little lapdog showed up. And Chad's just, like, parroting everything that Rue says. And, like, you know, there's nothing really I, original or new coming out of this. And I do think it's it was nice to have Chad on. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that we're kind of, again, like, I'm glad we're pulling the queens in. Um and I think, I'm hoping, granted, that maybe she provided more advice and, you know, information than the edit gave us. Right. Because um, I don't think Chad was a parrot, per se, but I do think there was a lot. There wasn't as much being said. Well, uh, the thing I appreciated was that Chad honed in immediately on, listen, the name of the game is to make this bitch laugh. Yeah. You make Rue laugh, you're fine. Mm-hmm. You got to be funny. Which I think is sound advice in this game. It it is, but it's it's ironic because I think some of the queens get so bound up in like the 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 outcomes and like the backlash or like the the uh, like not meaning to offend and like I mean there's a bunch of stuff, and so I think some of the girls, um, 
Yeah, they they just get too wrapped in their head about that stuff. Interestingly, if you watch what's what's what you're packing, Plasma did not plan to do Barbara. Mm. Which was wild because a lot of people theorized that because she had done Barbara in the RDR Live, that's why she didn't do it at Snatch Game because it would have been too similar. Mm. Or like bringing the character back again. Um, and she might have gotten critiqued from that. But when she talked to Michelle, she said that was not one of the two or three that she planned. Mm. So I found that very interesting. Um, anyway, so yeah, no, I, uh, I, I agree. I was very happy that um, Chad showed up. I will say this. If you watch the episode, there's a weird cut edit. And I feel bad because Rue comes in and then she introduces Chad. Chad comes around, goes to walk through the door, and the cut is right when Chad comes through the door. Chad's on the back side of the door. Chad's in, in front of the door, not Chad coming through the door. And that's because she had this headdress on, and I think Chad didn't know that she wasn't going to clear the door jam. <laughs> and so I think the very top of, like, the circular headpiece that she had on caught. And, mm. like, I don't know if it got damaged because I was paying attention, and they didn't seem to do a lot of shots where you could see the full thing. Mm. But... I can imagine, like, Chad was pissed or annoyed that, like, they didn't make it through the door. Like, it didn't yeah. catch that they should stoop down to walk through. Right, Anyways. Right, right. Um, but, no, I mean, Chad looked fucking amazing. Chad was you know? amazing. Chad looked and Chad, and Chad is a beautiful soul. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember when they came to King's Island years ago for Pride Night. Yes. And perform. I, I got a picture. Um, Chad's just, you know, great. And and absolutely amazing. For those that don't know, um, Chad Michaels actually was a stunt double fill-in for Cher um in some things so like it's not it's not uncommon for someone to post a picture of chad michaels as share and then for people to be like that's not really share like thinking it is share and it's like no honey that that's that's, that's, that's an impersonation <laughs> like a very good one <laughs> so yeah oh boy um what about you oh so you oh. went one you went one direction oh. with nerve and i went the other uh-huh yeah. Sure did. Uh, tsunami, tsunami, tsunami. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, fake gold teeth. <clears throat> Girl, it was just a bad execution all the way around. Like, I, I, I didn't care for it. I didn't care for the characterization. I didn't care for the jokes. It, like, I don't know what you did with the prosthetic thing. It changed your speech. And it felt like you were constantly struggling to, like, not spit out, like, the, the fake mm -hmm. teeth acrylic or whatever mm -hmm. was going on. It was just... No. No. Like, it was so bad. I was like, this isn't even a swerve. This is a – someone should have told you no. Like, Jesus, <laughs> take the wheel. Like, this this was bad. <laughs> don't allow this to happen. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, we don't know. Like, you're supposed to come with, like, two things planned. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, production's like, nope, you can't do that. And it might be the one that you're really strong at. So then you go to your backup plan or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It. Uh, I will say this. The idea didn't live up to the expectations. I feel like there was a lot there that could have been very fun and funny and would have gotten Rue laughing. Right. But either she froze or she just like got caught up in her head or something. Something happened and it ended up just going, it just veered off the range very quickly. Yeah. And because you, this is the, this is me. Like, I'm going to pull the T. Hello, everybody. This, you could have said and done anything with this because you didn't have like a, personality you know celebrity them like behind it to 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 back up what you were saying you could have done and said anything but you just kind of mumbled through it and that felt really really bad and again i don't know if it was the like you said the tooth or something or whatever it was something and it just did not help well, I mean, and a, and a bunch of people were and this is not very fair but a bunch of people were making like comparisons between tsunamis Gold Tooth Fairy and um, Trinity's Gay Satan, mm. and I was like, mm. Trinity had a character study, like a full fledged out like 
I'm going to be wild and I'm going to be silly and I'm going to be fun. And like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be something you've not expected. Right. And I don't mean not expected from Trinity. I mean, not expected from Satan. Like, like even Christo fascist. I don't think of like, think of Satan as like this, like flaming homosexual. Right. No pun intended. Um, uh-huh. You know, and that's where I was like, yeah, this is, this is very different. This is not, yeah. this is not the thing. It was just something. And it just could have been, it just, it could have been, it could have been good, but it wasn't. Yeah. Like, point yeah. blank period. It could have been good, and it wasn't. No, I agree. Shall we continue? I think we shall. All right, kitty girls, so we're moving on to snaps and eye rolls. These are the highs and the lows from these particular episodes. Like, these are kind of like special shout outs that we want to give recognition for. Uh, who are you giving snaps to? So there was a moment mm-hmm. in this most recent episode, mm-hmm. and it was Plasma versus Plane. Mm-hmm. And Plasma said something that made me laugh out for a while and i even wrote it down so this was when is this when um, she said confessional yes yes in confessional so in the context of the episode um apparently q tells plane that plasma is planning on doing something very similar to what um uh, plane was doing for her the see you next Wednesday, like right mm-hmm. away. And she walks over to her and she's like, sister. And I started asking about like what she's doing. And I heard someone tell me and blah, 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 blah. But she won't give any details to plasma about what she actually is doing. My favorite part that leads into this is when plasma says to Jade, well, can I see your design? And she's like, no. Right. And just shuts it down. And I was right. like, oh, oh, okay. Is this how mm-hmm. we're playing? Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in confessional, Plasma says, Gaslight gatekeep girl boss, get out of my station. <laughs> I fucking lost it. Girl. I... <laughs> that was so good. Now, she said it faster than I did. Just, just. Oh, I know. She spit it out so yes. fast. Yes. yes. Oh, but it was so good. So well put. And it, it, it again, it was a, it was a reminder to me, again, of some of the shadiness and such that comes from playing. And the queens aren't having it anymore. It was just a, like that, one of those reminders of that. Mm-hmm. And it made me feel good because... Again, you're not helping the situation. You're saying we're doing the same thing, but you won't tell me what you're doing. And you right. won't show me anything that you're doing. So I can't say whether we're doing the same thing or not because I have no idea what you're doing. I know what I'm doing correct? because I'm literally making it. And you know what you're doing because you're literally making it. But I can't know what you're doing if you don't tell me what you're doing. Right. So don't get on me about what I'm doing if you won't, that we're doing something similar, when you won't even give me an inkling of what you're doing. I mean, it didn't make, it, they were totally different at the end of it, by the end of the you know, episode, but like, right. it, it just bothered me so much. And I love that Plasma was, was very like, Mm-mm, I'm not having this, shut this fucking shit down. Like, no, you don't, you don't get to, you don't get to gatekeep or gaslight the situation and like say things to me to like make me feel bad because yes there was the the recent you know uh, design challenge where three queens made stuff out of the same fucking fabric i just that that was a whole other thing in and of itself but like don't 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 this is different we all got the same shit like they're gonna see a whole bunch of black and white shit they already know this like Nothing else we can do about it. I think uh, Plasma was channeling a little something from a previous season. I really could give two shits. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, 
think she I think she was she was living her detox moment and was like, fuck off. Like mm-hmm. girl, bye. <laughs> not having it. Not having it. Yes, not having it. Yeah. Agreed. Nice. Gary. Um, oh. So I've got snaps for two things. Um, I don't know if you remember this. So the first thing is is Q recognizing Rue's joke. Mm. So for those that don't know, when they run the when they do the runway, they run it twice. Yes. And the first time they run it, I believe, and the judging panel doesn't say anything. Right. And there's no music. No, or there's, there's music in the first time. Okay. I was gonna say I was gonna say either that or there's a click track, like something so that you like have a beat, but like that's it. Mm. And then the the judges usually make comments and stuff, but usually in all these seasons, the judges make comments and the queens never really can hear it or know what's going on because they mm-hmm. don't really react. But this time, Rue made a comment and Q totally like broke. The, the the wall and like reacted while she was walking backstage mm. and I was like and I was really amused by that like I appreciated the 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 rare behind the scenes kind of glimpse moment of like this funny thing where Rue makes a quip and it really kind of cracks up Q and she responds to it and I was like oh look at that I like that it's very playful so, fourth wall breaking but not really because we know the, you know we as the audience kind of get all of it at the same time, but we know right. if you are a good you know, hardcore Rue fan, you know that they do like the runways twice and you know that the second right. time is usually when the judges comments come through. Right. Usually. Yeah. Um, my second snaps are for the spit take mini challenge. Mm. And here's why we've never why? done that before. Right. I don't think so, no. Right. So I I appreciate the originality, like something a little different. What I appreciate is that it's quick drag and the queens have to apply a new skill that they may have not ever done before. Mm -hmm. And some of them, you can see the wheels turning when they're attempting to do it. And so I will say that all of them are successful. I hear the criticisms that in a post-COVID era, some of you were grossed out and were like, <laughs> no, ma'am. Like, we don't we don't need to be, like, spewing water on other people or whatever. Yeah. And to that I say, uh, shut the fuck up, bitch, because <laughs> you're in the back room at the Eagle getting pissed on or you're, like, you know, starring in your own Bukaki video that you made on the weekend. And that's full of bodily fluids. And so I'm not having that. I'm just I'm not having that. I'm just, you know, yes. there's I just think it's funny because <laughs> I had a, I, 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 I had a like, oh, this is this is definitely a sign that COVID's over um, in a way. Mm. But I was just like, like, there was also I don't want to say a whole bunch of precautions, but there were some precautions like there was a lot of room. They were literally like over here. And you had these moments where you saw like not necessarily rude per se, but like the pit crew kind of Correct. like like getting things on them or whatever. But they're literally wearing I mean, they're not wearing full on condom kind of things, but they've got like ponchos on clear, and, clear raincoats and stuff. Right. Because yeah. you still got to see the goods. Yeah. So I, I I'm I do sense that there was some measurements taken. Correct. to prevent some any particular thing in this situation. And there's nothing to say that the takes of the of the spit crew which is actually taken from race chaser just so everybody's aware. Cuz when Rue said that I was like, "Oh, she said the thing." <laughs> because it's the pit crew and with Willem in Alaska, they call theirs the spit crew. Ah. So when she said spit crew, I was like, "Oh, I was like I wonder if you know, Mom, as opposed to Wow, if Moguls Media is going to sue World of Wonder for like you know patent copyright, anyways, trademark bullshit. I don't think they will. I think they'll be flattered. But anyways, yeah. um, but who's to say that those reactions from the pit crew were actually from the actual contest itself? They might have done like B roll with a with a mm-hmm. little bit of a close up or whatever, like you know, and just you know, I need you to react to like water in your face or some bullshit. Right. So like water getting on you, or maybe they, or maybe they did like spray bottle you know 
or figure flicks. Off, off camera. Yeah, you yeah, know, something. Like, yeah. something. So, it, but, it's, it's, it, could, it could all, it, it, it's the magic of television, folks. It could have all yeah. been everything. Could have I don't been, know if I want to call it magical, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I I appreciated the the spit um, take mini challenge. Yeah, because I it was cute. woo baby, Nymphia Wind, like was shooketh. I'm surprised Nymphia Wind didn't choke. <laughs> like 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 honestly, when she left after she spit, I was like, wait, is that is that actually was that the challenge for her? <laughs> Because I was like, I thought Rue was just funny with her. And like, that wasn't the actual thing she was supposed to spit take to. So I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if, if there was actually another line that was supposed to be the spit take. And that's what she should have left. But they went with the first thing because Nymphia was so caught off guard by what Rue said. Right. And like, everyone was like, oh, shit. Oh, like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Molly, you a danger girl. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like like it was wild and I was like, man, that was that was that was some, something that else. was some funny shit. That was some funny Ooh, shit. That's some funny shit. <laughs> All right, let's move on to eye rolls. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Here it comes. Everybody brace for impact. <laughs> Hope you got your big panties on and you strap your seat in. Damn. Go ahead, Are David. Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Well, let me let me start off with this. I've had it officially. Okay. Here we so, go. So, what I put down is who really should have went home. So here's the key, y'all. Mm. Um, we get to the bottom of this most recent episode. It's Maya and Plasma. Mm-hmm. Maya, for Maya, it was her third time in the bottom. Mm-hmm. Plasma had two wins, and this was her first time in the bottom, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. The scales aren't scaling. The balances isn't balancing. But I've seen recently discourse on the on the on the on the Twitters or the X's, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. indicating that this is a callback to older at series where the lip sync did matter more than track record to where the lip sync could have actually saved you. So, that being said, Mm -hmm. they lip synced to um, um, the Bloody Mary, like, TikTok remix or whatever, sped up version by Lady Gaga, whatever it was. Bunch of shit that, again, utter discourse is like this episode. This song is from like a trend from last year. No shit. Um, <laughs> when do you think they recorded it? Right, right. Like, why is it playing? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> like, they can only do so much. That being said, so they do this lip sync, and the queen of flips flips out, and um, bobs and bald ballroom you know stuff and does all the things and surprisingly gets that gown to to move which i was not expecting and also for whatever reason pulls off her wig and has rose petals and she doesn't have anything on underneath which we know is like weird because she we know she's got a bunch of pixie wigs but uh uh she is able to win. She she stays. She gets to stay. Mm-hmm. And Plasma has to Shante sashay away. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel a ways about that. And this is me being um, a little shady, maybe. Um... Maya doesn't give good television. Okay. I don't feel anyway. Um, there's not been a lot there for me personally. Um, that makes me as invested. Mm. Um, 
I thought this was her time to go. I feel like maybe she thought this was her time to go, considering it was the, the third design challenge. It was her third time in the bottom. But whatever it was, it was a little off to me mm-hmm. that she got saved and Plasma didn't. Now, did Plasma do a terrible job? Yes. Like, don't, don't. <laughs> That outfit was a mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jim said, but at least she made it. But, uh... <laughs> so did. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know. But, uh... But, uh... The... the <sighs> it just... It didn't feel right to me. I'm just gonna say it. It didn't feel right that a queen who has given us two great performances and slips up this one time, well, no, we won't say that. I think she's not had the greatest design challenges, I will admit that. Um, But this time it was sort of, it it was very, very, very clear that it was bad. Mm -hmm. Um, It just didn't sit right with me. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, I think, I think Maya should have gone home. But there's the whole idea behind whether the lip sync truly does save you. Well, but this is where my response to that is the show has been inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Over 16 seasons of the American base series, it has not been consistent to know when when the rule is the rule how the rule will be applied so if if we're if we're going back to old school or like the way it should be however you want to phrase it then yes maya provided a more entertaining question mark like lip sync and therefore should stay so i was not surprised to see plasma go there's also a whole conspiracy theory online about how Plasma was getting the Broadway girl edit. The mm. Alexis, the Jan, the Rose, mm. the like, I'm a Broadway baby, like, and you never really do great. Mm. Like, you kind of win here, you kind of win there, but they drag you along, they kind of make you look like a buffoon or whatever. Um, and I kind of eschew that. I kind of say, mm, I don't think so. I think of all those queens I just named, Plasma has been the most successful. Now, yeah. some could argue that Rosé was more successful because she made it to the top. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't expect Rosé to win. So, like, there's a, a distinct difference there. Now, am I saying that Plasma would have won? I don't know. I really don't. Because what we didn't get was, like, singing chops. Mm. Like, we haven't gotten that far yet. We've done, We've had choreo. We've had acting. We've had lip syncing. We've had design, you know, we've had a bunch of things, but we haven't gotten to them, like, writing their own, like, full-out lyrics and right. singing them, recording them, and blah, this blah, blah, blah. might be something that happened this week. I can't remember. Maybe. It's yeah. Like... So, I feel like, you know, in, in the fairness of the season based on skills, absolutely, Plasma should have stayed. Right. Mariah should probably have gone home. But and that's where my feeling on it right now is, well, girl, bye. Like you're gonna you're not gonna make it to the end. You mean you mean Maya? Yeah. She ain't gonna make it to the end. Yeah. She's gone in the next episode or two. That's, yeah. That's the way I feel. That's why I made the comment in the telegram chat. Well, they didn't go as I expected a couple weeks ago. Because <laughs> we had this very conversation about who's left, who's next, and I would have thought that Maya and Morphine would have gone before Plasma. Mm. Possibly even Dawn would have gone before Plasma. Mm. So, um, but hey, you know, it is what it is. That that, all that being said, Plasma is the most mature, like, sachet away I've seen in I don't know how long. (laughs) She did not break down. She did not have, like, have an emotional catharsis, like, crisis intervention. She didn't have a mental health episode. Not that every queen does. But, like, a lot of them, it's an emotional journey. And Plasma was like, yep, got it. Gotta go. 
she had a prepared love, line. Love you love. all. Right, right. Yeah. Like she was like she not only saw the writing on the wall, but also decided to take control of her own narrative mm-hmm. for the exit. It was like I'm not going to boohoo about this. Like I feel incredibly blessed and grateful. Yeah. And then she even went on to say like she didn't even know she would win any challenges. Like so I yeah. think she was being very earnest, very mm-hmm. like forthright to say, "Baby, I just tried." Um and since you didn't see what you're packing, uh this was Plasma's one and only audition. Mm. So she she was not invested like other queens who have tried over and over and over again like Sophia. Um <laughs> So, you know, she got it one and done. Yeah. I think she's a, a guarantee she win for an All-Stars. Mm-hmm. And we kind of know and understand things. Um, so, yeah. Like, I, 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 I hear you on, on that about yeah. who who really should have yeah. gone home. But Oh. Yes. I want to hear this one. <laughs> Um, I'm giving eye rolls for Safira mansplaining plane. This happened in the Snatch Game episode. So mm-hmm. Safira was like doing this weird interpretive translator service shit, like explaining planes like personality and attitude and like how they carry themselves. And like I, I was just like, girl, what do you no, what do you what do you mama? No, stop. You are not everybody's mother. You do not have to, like, you do not have to, like, fiercely defend them as a mama bear. Like, you do not have to do any of that. This is a competition for you. You mm-hmm. are trying to win to make it to the end. And you have the potential to do that. And you already get criticism for, like, helping out the other girls with their outfits right. and shit. And, like, you know, I loved that she came over and talked to Plasma at one moment. Because she was like, nope, going to shut this shit down. Mm-hmm. I see you spiraling. We are not having that happen because you are a fierce queen and you're getting into a bad headspace. No, right. no, no, no. Not on my watch. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciated that she did that. But it was in the previous episode where she was, like, talking about, like, how played was, you know, this and that. And I was like, I think it was in Tuck- and Untucked a little bit. Like, she was ex- – and I was like, what are you – no. Shh, shh, shh. Shush. Stop. No more. Don't be doing that, girl. Like, you owe her nothing. She ain't going to give you the the bottle of, of shitty potion anyway, so just don't. <laughs> just don't. I just think it's weird to me. Again, I love Safira. I'm really rooting for her. I'm appreciating the motherliness from her. I see her doing very well in competition. But... There is this mo- this like situations where I think she's playing too much congeniality, mm. and that's being congenial is fine. Like I get that. That makes you know helping each other out. That's a, that's what sisters and queens do. Like that's a thing that we've all we were just talking about earlier in this episode. Right. But there is a flip to that. And that was a perfect example of what you were talking about with regards to her kind of like talking about who and what plane does and all this stuff where it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And maybe you should focus on your own game. Right. Like maybe you should focus on your own game. Like to me, um, I felt that Safira did a little better than plain in snatch game my opinion i feel that her outfit was very fun and nice and unique and if it wasn't for the fact that she was wearing literally the same like dance shoe that she's been wearing for weeks with just like a slip cover on it i think she might have won I think the little things are what get her, um, knock her out of like top placement. I'm amused by, did you see the meme online or the thing that happened on social media? And people were like, now we know how Safira got all that shit to California. She packed one pair of shoes. <laughs> and I was like, damn, damn. Yeah. Coming for the, coming for the girl. She may have packed, she may have packed a few pairs. I yeah. I think she packed like three or four. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. And maybe some covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least she didn't do the like 
same shoe and all white and just spray paint like that. Hey, it's worked for other queens, though. I know. I know. So, yeah, no, I, I, I hear you on that. Um, a part of me wonders if Safira has already scoped the lay of the land and said, you know what? I'm going to go pretty far. I'm not going to make top two. I see what's happening around me. Mm. And, I, and I see how the judges react or what's going on. I don't expect to make the I might make top four. I won't make the very, very end. So I'll play the game and I'll keep going. But right. like you said, there may be some gamesmanship where they're like, I want to go as far as I can and I want to be as polite and as good as I can. Because that appears to be like part of what my narrative is going to be. I don't know. Like I, I'm just hypothesizing because I'm like that would be a wild place to be in to like, you know, try for so many years and finally get on the show and then be there and then realize like, oh, Hmm. Well, compared to a Nymphia, I mm. might I might not win. Compar- mm. Compared to a plane, I might not win. Mm. You know what I mean? Interesting. And, no, I get what you mean. And so you pivot and you start like slightly adjusting how you're doing things because you're like, I want to go as far as I can. I want to continue on. I want to win as much money as I can. And like, if I'm not going to win, I want to come out shining on the other end. And right. so maybe she will end up with congeniality or something else. I really don't know. I mean, I will also say Safira is my my preference of all the queens to make it to the end. Three. Agreed. But that's probably because it's not a shoe in that she's going to make it to the end. I feel like Nymphia is pretty much just guaranteed um, to ah. make it because she doesn't really fuck up a whole lot. She, she survived Snatch Game. So. <laughs> True that. Um, and then yet again. Boy Who Cried Wolf, this whole, I don't know what I'm doing, and I only have a headdress, and blah, blah, blah. And then the <laughs> bitch comes out in that outfit, and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Fucking cunt. That's so don't, true. And, and, and listeners, viewers, don't misunderstand. I really like her as a queen. I'm just pissed. I'm so annoyed at the, the theatrics of her and her whole, like, <laughs> you know, and she just carries on and right. bullshit. And then, 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 this episode, mama, this episode, they're like, oh, well, you really seem to have a design eye. Did you go to school for this? Where did you go to school? I went to school in the UK. You did? Yeah. For what? For design with Atelier. And- the judges were shut down. <laughs> and I was like, where, where is it at? This one. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. That's how I felt about the whole, all the judges panel. I was like, shame on all of y'all. You can't tell me you didn't know that. Like, production right. kept that from all of you? Whatever, right. mama. Whatever. <laughs> I was so annoyed. It does genuinely, like. I, I, I do I do think that she's the, the queen that cries wolf all the time. And it, I don't yeah. particularly care for it. And I kind of, I think I even wrote down that people are getting over it, which I think is true. Like the queens are getting over. Yeah, ignore Nymphia. Yeah. Right. Because to me, I feel like they know now. Right. They, they've known. Like, I know, I forget. I think it was, oh, who put it in our chat? I feel... Hold on, I'm going to our I'm going to our um, C C O L D R Drag Race Telegram chat. Um, was it in? Here? Yes, it was. Um, oh, Wingardium, um, who put the uh, like it's a tweet. I think it's a tweet from Bussy Queen where it's um, you know you're be piloting the NASA space shuttle you know to the moon and then. Nifia says, I have a PhD in aerospace engineering. Oh, and that. Seven years yes. on the International Space Station. Yes. Like, it's just, yes. like, that's the shit, like, sometimes that is getting to me. And it's annoying to piss out of me because it feels like we are, we, we, ha- there was this incorrect, like, painting of Nymphia as, like, I don't know anything about anyone or anything because I'm just a kooky comedy queen, which she kind of did when she came in to the 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 workroom the very first time. Like, you probably made this quick paint, like, portrayal, like, uh, of her. And you've, it's now been proven to be false. Mm-hmm. 
and that she has a lot of knowledge and a lot of, of stuff backing her that is is really really like helping her in in the end of the game. So the and I, I I'm glad that the queens aren't 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 buying it anymore. Right. Definitely glad that that's the case. case. Yeah. So with that being said, what <coughs> excuse me, what are your thoughts? Let us know. There's several ways to do that. You can go to our blog, CubsOutLoud.com. You can leave a comment on a post there. You can also send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Or you could give us a phone call. You could leave us a message. We'd even play it on air. Or not. We want us to. Let us know. (laughs) So you would call 361-265-8255. We're pretty much on most of the social media outlets. Just type in CubsOutLoud as one word. Uh, If you want to join the infamous... Uh, telegram chat that we've been talking about in this episode you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen c-o-l-d-r um for a little group over there you can also see when we're going to be doing the regular show uh live to youtube at tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen c-o-l if you want to be supportive of this there's several ways to do that you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and see the various accoutrement we have there as we like to say damon showing off the consent is my foreplay drag pride version yes honey show off the girls um <laughs> womp womp. uh <laughs> we also have mugs uh keychains hats like handy towels shower curtains yoga mats we get all sorts of stuff with either the cubs out loud regular logo or the cubs out loud drag race logo so you're welcome to check that stuff out um if you would like to you can become a patron of cubs out loud and you go to patreon.com slash cubs out loud and for a dollar or more a month you can um, get the extended versions of our shows which include the pre and post show for each one both in audio and or video form um if you want to, you can just leave us a financial donation, a one-time tip, if you will, and go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud, and we will gladly uh, take that to help keep the lights oh, on around yes. here. And as far as uh, podcasts go, this also is available, if you didn't already know, as an audio podcast with its own RSS feed, which means any podcast player out there in the world, if you type in Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, you should be able to find us and then download the episodes that come in. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, otherwise, you know, we're around. You can even visit our blog and just play the episodes from there. You don't even have to download nothing. So that being said, Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Our most bare related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is not safe for work. Our pup umbra... Pup... Ooh, wait, that was wrong. Pup underscore umbra on Twitter... Pup Umbra 7-9 on Blue Sky. Neither of those are safe for work. Mm-hmm. Safe for work is DMA Gamer 7-9 on TikTok and Twitter. Good deal. Gary? If people want to get in touch with me, they can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel 7-3. Um, I do have a separate Twitter account that I did to sequester all the drag and spoilers to, which is G-A-R-B-E-A-R 7-3 D-R-A-G. So it's Gabriel 73 drag, where you can uh, see stuff on there. But otherwise... Which... Mm-hmm. It's very essential because girls be spoil it out there. And I got spoiled. The sh- almost got spoiled. No, I got spoiled the shit out of. I think it was, um, uh, Megami's elimination. Yeah, yeah. All right. So with that being said, uh, we're going to say goodbye, and we will catch you later after the next couple episodes. Bye. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.